Between cell divisions, a cell goes through various stages. These stages can be summarized in a simplified cyclic model called the cell cycle. Immediately following cell division, the new cell starts to grow and to produce proteins, intracellular membranes, and organelles. This first stage is called the G1 phase, for GAP1, because it is the first gap between cell division and the synthesis, or S phase, that follows. During the S phase, DNA is synthesized, which means that the entire genome is replicated. After the S phase, the nucleus includes two genomes, that is, four copies of each gene. After replication, each of the doubled chromosomes consists of two chromatids held together at the centromere. So, between the end of the S phase and the following mitosis, the cell is tetraploid. In this example, we see only one of the 46 chromosomes in its condensed form in the nucleus. The completion of replication marks the beginning of the second gap phase, the G2 phase. During this phase, the cell prepares itself for the impending mitosis. While it continues to grow, the cell produces the proteins necessary for mitosis. The G2 phase ends with the beginning of the condensation of the DNA. This condensation marks the prophase of the mitotic phase, also called the M phase, of the cell cycle. The prophase is the first of four main mitotic phases and is followed by the meta, the ana, and the telophases in that order. During mitosis, the cell is replicated while the tetraploid genome is divided in half. Thus, the mitosis process results in two daughter cells with diploid genomes. Following mitosis, a new cycle begins when the G1 phase starts, providing that all necessary conditions for the next cell division are fulfilled. Under physiological conditions, a normal cell is able to excuse itself from the cell cycle in progress, but at certain distinct points only. As soon as the cell has entered a phase, it passes through it completely. Only at the end of a phase, before the beginning of the next one, can the cell cycle be stopped. The sites at which an active cell cycle can be arrested are called checkpoints. There are three major checkpoints. The MG1 checkpoint between the replication and the G1 phase, the G1S checkpoint, and the G2M checkpoint. During tumorigenesis, all three checkpoints are relevant. The MG1 point and the G2M point play important roles in genomic stability, while the G1S point is key to regulating the proliferation rate. The checkpoint that plays the most important role in cell cycle regulation is G1S, also called the restriction or R point. For a cell to overcome the R point and start DNA synthesis, two necessary conditions must be fulfilled. First, the cell needs to contain a large number of active mitochondria-producing ATP, and second, the cell must be stimulated by external growth factors. Thus, an internal ATP level that is too low for the upcoming DNA synthesis or the absence of external cell cycle stimulating growth factors can lead to a cell cycle arrest at the R point. Additionally, proliferation inhibiting factors such as TGF beta can block the pathways necessary for stimulating DNA synthesis. The second significant checkpoint is G2M. Here, there are three factors that lead to cell cycle arrest. The mitotic prophase will not start if the cell is too small for division, a chromosome is significantly damaged, or the DNA has not replicated completely. The third significant checkpoint is located within the final phase of mitosis and is called MG1 checkpoint or anaphase checkpoint. Here, the cell checks to ensure that all chromosomes are equally distributed on both daughter cells. At this checkpoint, an internal multiprotein complex, the anaphase promoting complex, or APC, assists the cell as it passes through. The APC includes a ubiquitin ligase that initiates the degradation of the protein securin, which acts to inhibit the separation of the chromatids during the anaphase. In other words, APC is responsible for the equal distribution of the chromatids to the two newly emerging cells.